to this week's vlog. It's a Friday night, just finished work, and I'm down on the canal with Mark in search of carp. We've been up midweek and put a bit of bait in to keep the spots clear. And since that £18 carp that you've seen me have, this is the first session back chasing those elusive carp. So, as I said, I've just finished work. Um, we're back on tomorrow night, and in tomorrow night's session, I'll go over my rigs. But tonight, it is a Friday night, and I have just, like I say, finished work. The rods are out, um, both on tiger up boilies, and just hoping that we get a bite. So yeah, nothing much of a great intro. As I say, just going to chill out, relax, and enjoy this evening. And we'll do a proper blog tomorrow night when we're a bit more refreshed. So I'm going to sit back, and hopefully one of the rods fires away tonight. So, first fish in the night for Mark, a bream on the inside rod, and that is more than normal stamp, getting on for £5 that, proper bream, coming on the inside line on a boilie, let's get it back, get back in the sack. So it's 10 to 11 now, just about turn in for the night and see how we do, um, the traps are set, plenty of movement on the canal tonight, um, and the midges are, are proper out in force. But the, the small fish are all over the canal and it's been the odd bow wave on the far bank. So, fingers crossed, the bream have been quite quiet as well. We've only had that one between us, which we've noticed whenever we've done well with the carp, the bream have always been quiet. So hopefully that's a good omen. And between now and, I say, 3 o'clock in the morning until 6 has been the time when we've been getting the bites, but... The canal is so alive tonight. It just feels right. It just feels right for the bite. So fingers crossed within the next couple of hours one of the rods screams off. Right, so there's Mark with his tench. A lovely fish Mark. And a nice start to the evening, yeah? Yeah, not bad for the start. Obviously it's not what we want, but it's always nice to catch a tench off again. Been, these have been as elusive as a canal carp over for the last few years. It's nice to see them back. Mint condition as well, and yeah. a male fish, so the females must go a decent size. A lovely fish. Well done, mate. Right, it's about 10 or 15 minutes after Mark had that um, tench and the rod pulled off on the far bank rod, the one that was back leaded um, on a bottom bait, bottom bait boily. Uh, it's about what six pound maybe max or that. Yeah, six um, seven pound. It's going to be noticeable in the future, obviously because it's got half a, a nip out of its tail. But conditions feel right tonight, don't they, Mark? It's a blow on the canal, um, very quiet on the bream. And Mark's had that tench, and we've already had the result now with this small little carp. And again, like Mark said on earlier blogs, these are the future of the canal and show the, pre show the carp are breeding well. We won't keep it out too long, it's a warm evening, and let's get her back. Right, time for this carp to go back. Right, so it's about quarter to twelve now. Um, about twenty minutes ago, I had that fish, um, and there's a big full moon just come over the other side of the canal. Um, as I've always said with these blogs, night fishing is very hard for me to blog. Um, the camera doesn't pick up hardly anything, and when you do put the light on, it's not picking up what you want it to pick up. So it's quarter to twelve now. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to retreat into my shelter and try and get some sleep. Right, so that's my attempt at capturing the full moon um, just before I turn in. Um, that carp is the first carp that we've actually had before daybreak. They've all come um, between 3 and 8am 8 8 
so that does give us confidence going forward trying some up the night and um, there's a good shop on the canal um, the temperatures are quite warm but there is a good wind on it um, like I said I'm gonna turn in for the night and fingers crossed the next time you see us is one of us holding another car Six o'clock in the morning and the rods just screamed off with this lovely 11 pound, seven ounce carp, a lovely mirror carp, lovely yellows, a dark back and didn't half scream off, I was well away. Um, different experience when you're asleep, when you get a run, when you see them, you know, half asleep and the rods tearing off inside rod on the pop-up rig um what we'll do is obviously this is the first night of the you know the session at the beginning of um night two we'll go over all the rigs and the baiting up in more detail um, as i say i finished work last night in case you're getting the rods in and a bit of baiting and two fish and i did actually lose a fish about two o'clock this morning to a hook pull but more than what i could have you know hoped for one bream in the night and it just shows when them bream are quite quiet definitely confident about the carp then but that's a a great start to the first night and what we're going to do is get a couple of pictures and we'll let her go so yeah let's get a couple of pictures and get her back it's time for it to go back Right, so the morning of session one, as I said, arrived last night. Um, it's been a long week in work and we just wanted to get the rods in really, to be honest with you. Um, it was a case of getting the bait in, getting the rods in on the spot, sitting back and relaxing. We had that um, little little carp, about six or seven pound, and that actually come um, about 11 o'clock, which is the first carp on the sessions I've been with Mark that's come before midnight. You get the excitement, but you don't get um the, the fish haven't been coming but you still get that air of anticipation at, between 10 and midnight <clears throat> so a fish coming in that period is going to make the rest of them you know that period a lot more exciting for me because i know that there's possibility of a bite in that time um two o'clock we both had bream and um and then about half past two i had a screaming take i lifted into it and the hook pulled it was definitely a car so I lost one then it was back in the sack and as i said it was a really quiet airy night really it was it was really quiet the you know the the breeze kept, kept dropping and coming back and there wasn't much topping and then like, like you've just seen there early morning the rods gone off again with that 11 pound carp and two fish in the night is is more than you can ever hope for and um, we'd settle for one between us really so that sum summarizes night one um few jobs to do today on on the saturday and we'll be back tonight for another go and let's see what we do tonight so the next clip that you'll see will be will be us back on the bank in a couple of hours time I promised at the end of the vlog when we let that fish go i'd talk a bit more today um about my rigs and the setup that I've come to and um, with these videos I've put them in a playlist and I'll put a link at the top of the screen now to the full playlist where these videos will be in the last video before this one you will have seen myself and Mark talk about our baiting up strategy and the baits that we've used and the mix of particle that we have um, put together to keep our spots clear so when we come up and bait up in the week um, that is the bait that we're using to clear the spots and get the fish and the wildlife keeping them spots clear um, so that will be the video that went before this on the nights of the sessions um, what I was hoping to do in these videos because what you've got to remember is from the start when we were doing the method feeders as soon as I wanted to try and catch a carp 
I wanted to get to this point where I am now, at a, a point where I've got an idea, a theory, like anyone who watches the channel, you've got to have a method to your madness, so um, you've got a, a theory now of when I come on the bank fishing for carp, I've got a theory that I think works, and in my head, I'm fishing as best I can to try and catch a carp. So what we'll start with is um, the bait. Right, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the bait that I'm putting in the swim and how that's changed from when we first started. Um, on session number one, you remember that we were fishing for bream and we were putting um, lots of small particles, pellet, um, hemp, tears, and I think there was bread in it as well. And that was just to attract the bream into the swim. Um, my hope with this is to get to a point where I'm confident putting I am a theory out there to try and catch the car. Now the bream, what they do to a swim and what I feel like they do when I was fishing for them is they would move in, clear everything out and move off and when you're fishing for the car, they seem to arrive at the party a bit later and the biggest worry for me is that the bream move in, they clear you out and then you're left with a tiger up boily in the swim and there's not much attraction there for a carp passing through to come into your swim. So, I've been working with Mark and talking it through with him. And what we've, what, I've, what we've both come up with is a way of thinking that we'll leave bait in the swim along with the boily. So what I've been putting in the swim last night is maize and tiger nuts. So you put the maize in because that visual attraction from the maize is obviously doing something because you're catching the carp when we put it in. And when we put the corn in, the maize is bigger, so it'll counteract the bream a bit better, hopefully. And the tiger nut, what the tiger nut does is if a bream comes in and clears all the maize out and all the, 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 um, the tiger nut boilies that I'm putting out there, um, and leaves just my boilie, then there is a good chance that, worst case scenario, my tiger nut boilie is surrounded by a load of, ti a load of actual tiger nuts. And that is not such a bad thing, really. Um, so yeah, that is the theory behind, behind that mix, and as I say, there's a link to Cheshire Particle in the description below. Having worked with Mark, and you know, spent a lot of time with Mark, he works with a lot of customers and he's more than happy to customise any of the mixes. Like for example, I don't think that is on the website, but if you ask for it, he'll give you the price and you can work together to get a mix that works on your venue. So that is what I'll be putting out over the swim, and with that, I'll be putting out the Tiger Up Boilies as well over the top and they will be going on to both swims so hopefully that shows um the theory behind the actual bait that i'm putting out on the session talk about the rig and this is the rig that caught the um six pound carp last night and on the other two videos in part two and three um caught them two upper doubles this is a knotless knot a size six hook um a tiger nut boily, six inches of Corda IQ, a rig sleeve, and then the quick change bead just pushes into the lead clip, a two ounce lead, and then there is some ESP um, tungsten tubing at the top of the rig to pin it down. That is the rig that I put on the far bank line last night, and that will go on the far bank line tonight. The rig for the inside line, um, I actually asked Mark to tie me this one and show me how to tie it. Um, it's for the inside line and there is a little bit of the, um, I don't know what the name of the weed is but it's like a fine filament weed and it's only on the inside line and um, that is why I, you know, I, I wanted a pop up rig and one that uh, you know, is proven to work. Um, so what have we got here, we've got a um, PVA bag with crushed tiger nut in, um, a hook, a tiger nut um, dynamite bait pop up boily that is the line that's going to be using there is esp tungsten coated braid with the first couple of inches stripped back it's got a i think it's a fox egg sinker obviously that moves on the line like that so you can control how high you want your pop-up to sit off the bottom um on the ones i had last night i had it quite low um so it was only a maximum that amount off the bottom um, and the rest of it's just the same as the pop up the um, the other rig. You've got your um, tubing to stop it tangling. On this one, I've got a heavier weight. Um, sometimes the line goes through the weed, and 
I just think if you have a heavier weight, you want to get a good hook hold um, because the carp, the carp is going to go through um, a lot more of the inside weed on this line. So you, you know, you want a good solid hook hold. And then the ESP um, tungsten tubing again to pin the last couple of inches, you know, a couple of foot behind the the rig back. Um, but that's the rig as it sits. And as I say, I can't take any thingy from it. Mark tied me this one up. And that is the rig that will be going out on the inside line tonight. Um, I had a run on it last night that I missed about 2 o'clock. And this one was the one that I caught the 11 pounder on um, at about 6 o'clock this morning. So that will be going back out on the inside line tonight. Right, so um, that's a little explanation on the rigs and the bait that I use on the session. Um, and hopefully that shows how, how my thought process in these videos is changing and learning. And that's what fishing's all about. Fishing is all about the journey of learning. And obviously the fishes you go through in the end goal of whatever you want to catch. If you want to catch a 20 pound carp and that's your goal, that's your end goal. But fishing is for me is all about the journey from, from there to getting to a point where you're confident on what you're doing. And that is where I am now. Um, when I cast the rods out of a night time I expect to catch bream because you can't help but catch them. They're in the canal, there's a lot of them and they eat anything. There's no bait that they won't eat. But I'm doing as much as I can to limit them. I'm doing as much as I can to limit the effect of them if they move in. With the, the tiger nuts still remaining in the swim as some form of bait if I get cleared out. And I think I'm doing all I can. So when I leave that bank in the morning, um, I think I've done all I can to get a bite. Now it's down to the fish and hopefully I can't move in through. And if, even with all this prep, my mindset is you've still got to um, rely on a carp actually moving through your area. Um, coincidentally, I've actually seen a picture of that carp that I caught last night and it was caught possibly two weeks ago, a week ago. Um, how far, Mark? Two mile? A good, a good two mile down the canal. It's the same carp and it's been caught a good two mile down the canal. So that just shows the move uh, fish that are in front of you today could be two miles away tonight and then fish that were there last night might could well be miles away and that is what you're dealing with so as long as i go home tomorrow think after each session thinking i've done all i can and that's how i deal with it Right, so um, the rods have been out for about two hours now um, and one thing that I, I did want to cover at the start of the video um, was one little thing that, we, that I've added to me fishing um, is a back lead and this come from a session that me and Mark did not too long ago um, middle of the night and I, I had a tight line across the canal and the carp come across and it hit the line and you seen a bow wave go bow waving off down the canal um, and that was enough really to convince me that you've got to do it um, if they hit the line that's how they react and it was there to all to see we were sat talking it was dark but we were, we were you know being quiet but talking and the, you seen a big boil and a bow wave as it as it hit the line so one thing that I will be adding into me fishing um, and I did last night on this session is a back lead and that will be on the far bank rod so I'll be back leading across the canal to the far bank rod um, and that is something new that I haven't been doing on all the other videos but from now on most certainly will be doing and that was a lesson like we all do sometimes we learn them the hard way don't we like with the coots up the top end that's another lesson learned the hard way so yeah I'll be putting them on from now on Right, so it's about um, nine o'clock now, and the sun has gone over the, the trees, and it's all quieting down again, like on the other videos. Um, the difference tonight will be was having that carp last night. Um, on the other evenings, there's always been that that air of anticipation um, when it's quieting down and and the water goes a bit quieter. Um, but we've always had bream or or tench. Um, having that fish last night will, will give an air of uh, an added air of anticipation 
Um, one thing I do find hard with these videos, and I've said it before, is night fishing. It's uh, very hard to capture the um, the feeling of the evening because once the light goes, even just capturing the moon last night, like I tried to do last night, it doesn't look like you're seeing it. It just it, it doesn't have the same clarity. Um, so yeah, um, we're, go we're moving on now towards that evening period, and fingers crossed tonight is a repeat you know of last night and we have a couple of carp on both our swims um anticipation and expectation are two bad things aren't they but you can't help it when it when it's fished so well last night and the conditions seem exactly the same bright hot sunny day it's cooled down a lot and it's the hoodie being on um but it has got that strong breeze on it again um blowing down the canal which mark has always said to me since the start that is good and last night it proved so um so hopefully it bodes well for tonight so about an hour now till you know till we expect anything to happen but just settling in and waiting and fingers crossed the next thing you see will be one of us with a fish on the bank right so it's um Sunday morning now, uh, the end of the, the session. Uh, last night, sum it up really quickly, we both had a cracking night's sleep. Um, nothing happened. I think it's the first time we've been on here where we've cast in and none of the rods have had a tap or we've not had a bream or a fish and both of us have, com have completely blanked. Um, I guess it shows the, you know, how hard a challenge it is on the canal. Um, the night before, um, three runs, two carp, a few bream and, and a couple of tench and exactly the same tactics the next night where you'd expect the swim and the spot to be more developed over the next day not a tap, not not even a beep um, about half past 11 I went to, you know, got my head down I uh, woke up at 4 and realised that nothing had happened and it was quite an alien, you know, feeling because normally something's happened during the night um, I brought the rods in and we cast them ready for you know that first light um, bite time that we seem to have on here and they were clear, there was no debris on the hook, there was no, um, they weren't tangled or anything like that, they come in clear and easy so that's not the reason why we didn't you know get a bite um, and about five o'clock I was woken up again by um, a run and I had three coots on the spot um, coming up with bait so it says to me that there's been nothing through the area tonight not even a, a shoulder bream because there's still bait left on the, on the bottom and I don't well, as you've seen we don't put a huge amount of bait in just enough to attract and to get a bite and yeah they were they were they've been diving for the last hour um, picking up the bait every now and again so it says to me there's still a bit of bait left on the bottom so my theory is that, that, that nothing has come through the area um, and hopefully this this blog shows the tactics and you know where we've gone from um, session one with the method feeder through to now to having a tactic that you're confident with I'm leaving this morning now knowing that I did all I could last night to get a bite and the fish just didn't come through um, I'm happy that what what I did through the night was good enough to catch a carp because it did the night before and they just weren't there so um in recap an enjoyable two days on the bank uh, two canal carp we, you can't complain at that more than made up with that over the two set over the two nights and it concludes another part of the blog um today i'm off on a canal trip with me friends from work so i'm looking forward to that um hope you're enjoying the series if you are enjoying the series um it'd be great if you could obviously like and subscribe to the channel and you know if you've got any questions on anything that we do put it in the comments section below and i'll do my best to answer the question but till then tight lines and i'll catch us all next time